Enterprise Management 360. Hello and welcome to another episode of Tech Chat. Now today I'm going to be speaking with Brian Hussey, who is the VP of Cyber Threat Detection and Response at Trustwave. So Brian, thank you for coming on today's episode and talking to me. Hey, thanks for having me. It's great to have you here and I think a good starting point is if maybe you could give our viewers at home a little bit of background on yourself. Absolutely, yeah. Um, again, Brian Hussey, the VP of Cyber Threat Detection and Response at Trustwave. I came onto the company about six years ago where we lead our incident response investigation teams, uh, threat intelligence, threat hunting, and now our, our MDR and, uh, and managed security services within the, uh, within the Trustwave organization for, from an analytics point. Excellent. A man of much knowledge, which is what we need for this, uh, this episode, because it's interesting because what we're going to be discussing today is Trustwave has come out with this alarming discovery, which you guys have been working on. And from my understanding, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but it's to do with a hidden backdoor embedded in tax payment software. And a Chinese bank requires corporations to install this very software to conduct business in the country. Yeah, absolutely. This is a big story with us and what we discovered, and it's just been kind of growing uh, bigger and bigger and becoming more interesting and, and deeper. You know, the, the each each shovel scoop we dig out leads to more interesting things. So uh, mm -hmm. I can give you a bit of a, of a background on, on how we started. We have part of our service is called uh, MDR, Manager Text and Response, and uh, you know, highest level of that service is uh, you know our complete version. And that includes a threat hunt, a deep dive threat hunt across our entire company or client environment uh, multiple times a year, four times a year. So we were starting off the, the first threat hunt for this client. They're a UK-based client, uh, software, technology vendor, but they do business with the uh, Ministry of Defense in UK, as well as Australia, the Department of Defense in, in the US. So certainly a high value target. Um, they, you know, they made the right move by investing in their security. The timing was fortuitous. They had just started their, their Chinese operations. As part of that, you know, the, their bank was a, a vital partner. You know, as you go, it, we support this, right? There's, there's a, a huge market monetarily in China. A lot of money, a lot of opportunity, a lot of, a lot of chance to grow your business, which is great. But I think the case study that, that we're telling here really highlights that if you're going to go into this market, you need to be very careful. You need to be very wary. You need to, to invest and, and devote time and priority to security. So, so this company was just opening these businesses they, in, in China. They were working with their, their bank, it helped them handle all the paperwork, all of that. Well, right about the same time, we were starting our first threat hunt for this client, global threat hunt. And um, so we built an entire backend for, you know, threat hunting platform. And it started to flag on some interesting beaconing activity. It started to flag uh, using Yara rules, which are rules that you know that detect strange things, right? Um, from a hunting perspective, some some capabilities that this binary had that they probably shouldn't. And we said, okay, this is a little strange. We went to our client and said, uh, you know, take take a look at this. We would like to know what your opinion is. And their response was, oh, don't worry about it. That's our, our our bank's uh, tax software. So it's required to, to pay our taxes in China. So, so don't worry about it, forget about it. So, so okay, you know, we took that kind of at face value and, uh, but we went back, of course, we didn't forget about it. As we started to research, we found it was absolutely a malicious program, right? So a few interesting things about this is, number one, it installed two hours after the original install. So you install, if you picture yourself as the IT guy, you double click on the program, it requires you to give system level privileges, which is the highest possible level of privilege. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, you know, it's like social engineering on steroids, right? I mean, it's, you, this is your bank, this is your trusted partner, this is your, your, this is tax software, what can be more legitimate than that? So companies are, are double clicking on it, they're installing it, they're giving it all the privilege that it needs, and it works, it works perfectly to pay your tax software, and then the, to pay your taxes. Then the IT guy walks away, you assume, and two hours later, a secret download from a completely different network infrastructure is pulled on, onto, the, uh, onto the system. And now it has this command and control 
with this rogue network infrastructure. And when I say command and control, full command and control, I can remote shell so I can do any Windows command I want at system level privileges. So it inherits that from the parent software. Uh, so perfect privilege to do whatever you want. It has um, uh, a, a triple layer persistence mechanism. And when I say when I, I, I say that it, it uh, of course, it installs itself as an auto start service. So if you ever reboot the system, it's going to restart automatically. But beyond that, it also uses something called exe protector module. So if it ever gets deleted, it's going to automatically re-download and reinstall itself. And it downloads two different versions of itself, one called SVM, one called SVMM, each one responsible for its protecting each other. So if that IT guy ever comes back and says, oh, I want to delete it, as soon as he tries to delete or tries to stop or tries to do anything to, to change it, it's going to be automatically restarted by its counterpart. So just a, a very strong level of protection. Uh, it enables remote uh, execution of any kind of code, be that ransomware, be it a Trojan. So, so the, the capabilities are at the top, but it's very, very well hidden. Nothing found it, no EDR tool, no antivirus, nothing out there found it. So, so that, was, that was the big finding um, and golden spy. Now, uh, that evolved, right? So that story actually evolved. That, that was, for us, this is a major thing impacting any business doing, doing uh, uh, operations in China. And we published on it, we published a lot of information. We have rules for, for hunting and finding this threat and, and what, to, what to do with it when you find it. So directly after that, within days of us publishing, uh, this, this Chinese company, they, they published and they pushed a new uh, binary to their tax software to execute that deleted all traces that it ever existed. So deleting log entries, deleting, uh, deleting the files and folders themselves, deleting registry entries, deleting the, uh, the actual deleter itself, all silently without user authorization. They're basically trying to, to remove every trace that had ever existed. So of course, as a researchers, we're observing this. And we, uh, you know, we say, okay, wow, they're, <laughs> they're following the same uninstall recommendations we gave in our report. So we uh, identify this and we report on this as well. And we provide new detection rules to identify the uninstaller from that point and we publish that. So within 24 hours, they responded with yet another new version of their uninstaller specifically designed to evade the detection rules that we provided. Uh, so it's just a very interesting back and forth cat and mouse game uh, with these adversaries who are now trying to, to you know, they, they realize we caught them red-handed and now they're trying to, to fade into the background. Uh, and it's, it's been a fascinating back and forth. Uh, and just this morning, we published additional research and uh, I'll let you, so I'll let you get a word in. I've been going on and on, but uh, I can tell you about the new research as well. Yeah, no, I was going to say it's, it's, fascinating to hear about this kind of threat because it for me personally it's not something that i've ever come across and it sounds like from your angle as well it's it's a new way of approaching things so obviously please tell me about the the research that you came up with this morning but is this a new kind of threat vector what was the purpose of them installing it was it a testing site that they were hoping to use or were they hoping it was literally going to be left in the background for a long time and then they can act upon it in the future well, I would say it's definitely not a, a new, I guess it's how, how we define vector. Uh, it's, you expect, right? I mean, this has been, we read about it in the news all the time, um, especially if you're security-based news and following all the, the blogs and things that are happening. There's a constant back and forth, not just between China and the United States, but Iran and North Korea and yeah. other nation states, and not just the United States, like uh, UK, uh, Hong Kong, Australia, uh, all over the place, right? There's a constant cyber war and not just countries and criminals, cyber criminals Definitely. seeking information and you know either monetary gain or intelligence or uh, research and development constantly going back and forth at a, at a level and a scope that your average person never has an idea this is existing. There's thousands of well-paid, full-time, highly trained technical experts that are, are, that's their job, that's their purpose in life, 
is to steal the data from companies, from government agencies, from all these different groups, right? Mm -hmm. So that, that's constantly going on under the surface. But what I find interesting about this vector is, again, like, like I mentioned before, is it, it's, it, it works with in, in the human mind, right? It's social engineering. And, and you think of a, a phishing email, right? You double click on a link when they have a, a really clever subject line that, that makes you want to click on it. Right? They're, they're tricking you into clicking on something. They're, they're taking advantage of the human weakness. But you know, that's the most basic level of, of social engineering. When you take a look at social engineering at the scope and level of what we're talking about in this case study, it's kind of mind blowing. Uh, to me, it's a very fascinating story because of the, the, the innovation and the care and the effort that went into gaining that legitimacy to get to get companies to, uh, to, to install. And beyond that, so the first uh, bit of research I talked about was called Golden Spy, based on you know, Golden Tax Project, that kind of thing. So this next one we're calling Golden Helper, completely different malware, um, very much sophisticated in how it delivers its payload. But it's, uh, the, it, it's, again, same thing. This time it's in uh, value-added tax, VAT tax software, so the payment of, of those types of taxes. It's yet another backdoor. In this one, I think Golden Spy tried to maintain some level of plausible deniability. They tried to call themselves an updater. They tried to look like they belonged. Uh, Golden Helper, on the other hand, used much more advanced and more sophisticated techniques. But by using those techniques, I mean, they, they lost any chance of being able to claim um, that it was a, an updater in any way legitimate. So while more advanced in some ways, clearly without a doubt malicious and, and there to steal information. So, um, so very interesting, but again, two of the main pieces of software for this national product or pro project to pay taxes, we've discovered malware in. And uh, so it's been, you know, for that, I, I think just, just fascinating. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, and and, and that's what I meant. It's it, it's kind of a new style of doing it of that trusted nature of people understanding. You wouldn't really bat, bat an eyelid for it being there at the end of the day. That that's the most shocking thing that you would find. So, in terms of that, what advice are you kind of giving to users, or how are you expecting to tackle it going forward? Because as you say, you've seen evolution happen almost as quick as you're publishing research. Well, and, and that's kind of becomes a challenge because it's, the, it's the, the literal rock in a hard spot, right? If your company invests million dollars to do operations in China and they tell you, you have to install and use this software in order to pay your taxes, the hard, the rock is, well, you are required to, to use this software in order to conduct operations, but you know, there's a security flaw in it. Mm -hmm. So, Right. I mean, you know that it's not just a security flaw, it's open malware. It's a wide open back door into your network by an unknown adversary, a major, major problem. But uninstalling it means that you may not be able to do business in China anymore. You may not be able to pay your staff. You may not be able to, to uh, you pay your taxes, you'll be shut down. So you, you're in this, this um, you know, from a security uh, practitioner perspective, there's no easy answer here, right? Um, so, you know, we, we understand the business criticality of this software. Uh, so what we've done in the technical report, so you can, you know, your, your, your listeners can go and to the Trustway blog and there's a, on the original blog, the Golden Spy blog, there is a technical report that they can download with all of the details. And we provide hunting tips and IOCs. And our number one recommendation is remove it, right? Remove it all. Because it's not just Golden Spy. Right, Golden Spy and Golden Helper are downloaded malware, but you got to remember this tax software, the base tax software, downloaded and executed the uninstaller. So even the mm -hmm. base tax software itself is still able to execute whatever they want within your network. Um, so, so even if you d delete Golden Spy, they can still download something at any time and execute it at system level privilege. So the key is to be able to you know, yeah, sure, remove Golden Spy, remove Golden Helper, all of that. But at the same time, you need to uh, completely segment the system running this software completely off of your production network, harden it to the greatest extent possible. You know, by doing that, 
you should be able to, and I would even pin test to make sure you've truly segmented it in every way possible. We do put a lot of recommendations on how to do that in our technical report, um, but, but that's very, very key. Cut any level of communication between production network and even don't let your, your, your users, you know, plug a USB key into it and then plug it into your production network, right? Those kind of things are potential ways to air gaps. So you need to be very careful yeah, it's um, follow the expert advice, I think is the best takeaway for that. Um, and it, it's an interesting story in seeing how it develops. As I said, it, it's something that is very interesting to see how it evolves and if other attacks start to take this kind of um, approach as well. So Brian, thank you very much for coming on today's episode. It's a great story. We're going to make sure that we include a link down below if people do need help, um, especially with our Asian audience, so they can uh, reach out and get any help that you might need. So thank Great. You. Well, thank yeah. you very much. Appreciate it. And thank you everyone who took the time to watch this episode. We hope you took a lot away. Of course, as I said, links will be down below. So uh, please make sure you look into this and research it. Even if it doesn't directly affect your company or organizations that you might have, it's still an interesting topic to learn and keep an eye out for in the future. We'll be back next week with another episode in our Tech Chat series. You can join the conversation on our social channels at Ian360, on Twitter and LinkedIn. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. And of course, for more great daily content, head on over to em 360 Tech dot com.